In this episode of Pathfinders, we'll be exploring the open data movement, what it is, and how it's evolving thanks to the innovative and entrepreneurial thinking of today's Pathfinder. We live in a data-driven world, and everything we do, whether you know it or not, is powered by data. In our last episode, we talked about data with location and how the GIS industry is maturing. So what then is open data? And how are these two disciplines, GIS and open data, intertwined? If you're a taxpayer, then open data is your data. Governments are releasing your data openly so that you can use it. And if they are not, you should be asking your community, why not? So that you can actually download data or interact with maps and dashboards powered by open data to understand what's going on in your community. But not everyone has time for that. Well, startup companies do, and they are springing up everywhere, building apps that are powered by open data and feeding that data right to where your eyes are. And you might not even know it. But what about smart technologies? Ability to think a thought and ask a question of a connected device and receive the answer tailored to your location. That is what today's Pathfinder has done. Matt Patrician and his partners have developed Query. Query helps cities connect their services that they provide to their residents in a way that is truly unique through smart home technology open data, and community engagement. Let's zoom into the map and talk to Matt at his home in Burlington, Ontario. Welcome to Pathfinders. Oh, thanks a lot, Jeff. Thanks for having me. So Query, that's a cool name. Like, what is Query? Uh, why don't we just ask uh, Alexa? Alexa, what is Query? Query connects smart speakers and voice assistants to local government services and community engagement initiatives Query is the combination of a question directed at authoritative municipal data in context to the location of the person asking. That's really cool, Matt. Before we take a stroll down your path, Matt, tell us, what is open data and why is it important to your business? Well, uh, you know, a lot of focus is put on open data to encourage trust in local government by constituents, but it's also sort of the fastest way for any municipality to break down, you know, silos internally and enable collaboration and innovation. You know, and for, for Query and, and likewise for many other entrepreneurs, um, we tapped into open data to, to build our proof of concept. Um, and our concept started with the idea that all municipalities have a similar set of services that they provide that use a common set of data. And if that data was open and standardized, mm -hmm. we could build a, a product that could help all cities engage with the residents um, using this new technology that, that's becoming quite per pervasive, um, like artificial intelligence, chatbots, and voice technology. Wow, that's cool. <clears throat> so you help communities connect their corporate website to the cloud, basically starting a whole new conversation with their constituents. How does GIS factor into this? Well, our, our goal was to use location-based information provided by cities like uh, waste collection routes and parks, construction projects, you know, and serve that up to users through their smart speakers. Mm -hmm. um, virtual assistants and smart speakers all have uh, an address or a location uh, associated to them, you know, whether they're in your home or with you on your smartphone. Um, so when we know where you are, we can provide you with uh, service information that oh. you, you need in context to your location. You know, okay. We want to take the learning curve out of using web maps right. and potentially limit the need to search for information on a city's web page. Just, uh, just ask your smart speaker or virtual assistant. Wow. So communities publish their location data openly and your application allows us to interact with it. Do, do we need to know GIS? as end users? Uh, yeah, so that's like that's the whole magic of what we're building at Query. Um, and that's that's what a lot of open data programs, I think, are missing. Mm -hmm. um, you, you don't need to know anything about GIS or mapping or technology, really. You're, you, mm -hmm. we're, we're just putting authoritative city data right in front of people in, uh, in the apps cool. and the devices that they use every day. Nice. Really reducing that friction between the data and the end user. That's awesome.
Well, Matt, you know, we talked about GIS and, and we're really intrigued in how you got started in this GIS industry. Originally, I had uh, I had no idea what GIS was. You know, I'd started out in college focused on TV and media production. Um, I'd started getting really interested in web design and I'd always been interested in maps and that sort of led me to find the GIS program at Fleming College. Um, mm. So really early on at Fleming, mm -hmm. I saw a gap between the, the graphic design elements of cartography and the uh, analytics of GIS, you know, mm. and, I, and I knew, or I felt that there there was going to be an opportunity to bring the two closer together, and uh, and make web-based GIS more usable through good design. Mm. Um, I've worked in municipal GIS for almost 20 years now. With uh, I had a short break at Esri Canada before going back to the public sector, where I get to help promote the value of geospatial to uh, to lots of people. Mm. And, as a professional in the geospatial industry, I think a lot of us like to be hands-on, right? Our work is pretty unique, and uh, we're given um, these opportunities to help solve people's problems. You know, we're regularly rolling up our sleeves and getting our hands dirty with data, software, and visualizations. And a common path at any organization, I think, is uh, is to eventually move into a leadership role. You know, and uh, and while this it provides growth opportunities and new ways to help create more awareness around geospatial capabilities. You know, by nature of the position, you spend less time creating things and solving problems. So moving into a leadership role was really important to my journey. And uh, I really enjoy the day-to-day -day challenges that, that that brings. But I was missing the creative outlet, that being a GIS specialist provided. And so that's when I took, uh, took an idea that was presented at a GIS conference in 2017, and and I built a startup around it, uh, oh. Query Inc. Matt, what you've done here is very innovative, and innovation is fueled by passion. Tell us, if you will, maybe a little bit more about what drives you, I and mean, how did you become so passionate about this type of work? Well, originally my goal for Query was to show the the utility of municipal open data. You know, I'm a big proponent of cities opening their data inside and outside their organization. You know, sharing it, breaking down silos, collaborating, and and really getting shit done. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's been a lot of great work by municipalities, um, you know, making some data available online for anyone to use. But there still isn't a really good understanding, I think, from most organizations of why they're doing this, you know, who's using it and what for. Um, so something that really connected with me was uh, what the, the York Info Partnership, you know, is doing and strives to do. Uh, and that's getting authoritative city data in front of people uh, inside the apps that they use daily, uh, let's say like Yelp, uh, for instance. So I, I started my company query to create this new channel for people to communicate with their city, you know, effectively connecting Google Assistant and uh, Amazon Alexa devices to municipal open data and their city web portals. You know, and that would let anybody with a smart speaker or virtual assistant find out information about their city services just by asking their devices. Hmm. Uh, you know, every city has a zoning bylaw web map online, but you know, finding it and yeah. figuring out how to use it can be tricky. Yeah. But asking Alexa, what's the zoning for my property, you yeah. know, gets you that immediate feedback just by asking your question in, in like a conversational way. Right, right. So, so we built a, a voice app for Google Assistant and Alexa called Q11. Um, and that's sort of our play on the 311 number that you can call to get similar information, um, you know. And, and the issue is, the, or the problem that we're trying to solve um, is, you know, a lot of call centers are experiencing high call volumes, right. and uh, res residents are stuck on hold waiting to get the details about something they could just easily ask their their yeah. uh, electrons. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, you know, the being a, a citizen and the user experience of a court of a corporate website or a city's website isn't always fun and sometimes frustrating to find things buried. You know, so I love that you've taken this passion for user design and this knowledge of GIS and brought them together. It's very cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, thanks. thanks. Well, Matt, you know, effective leaders are able to put their passion into action and grow their teams to deliver high quality work. You know, how did you turn this passion you have for smart technology and GIS into a business? Well, I had uh, originally pitched the idea of using voice technology to the innovation team and IT mm. leads uh, at the municipality I was working at. Um, but they all passed on the idea. So, you know, I didn't get that immediate validation that I was hoping for. Um, and it set me back a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, most times I would try different angles, uh, pitching ideas to different groups around the city uh, until somebody got it. Um, huh. But this time I, I decided to keep the idea to myself and then think about how it could be made into a viable product and a mm. platform. Mm. So, uh, after a, about a year of prototyping, we came up with uh, this idea, concept of, of the query cloud. Uh, it, it's the engine and the connector between city data and our voice applications. Uh, our, our platform allows any city to connect their data to the Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. Wow. You know, and, and because of my interest in municipal open data and GIS, I knew that there were uh, loosely standardized sets of data available publicly um, and very common web mapping applications like uh, what ward am I in or who's my counselor yeah. and where's the nearest park where I can play tennis you know you can find those on on most municipal websites uh, so that that knowing that and understanding that uh, it allowed us to build our prototype um, and then a minimum viable product to go to market and so we connected directly to a bunch of open data portals and we built demos using existing authoritative data that we would then share online with, with those municipalities. Um, we also got involved with ESRI and ESRI Canada um, and we were accepted into their emerging partners program. So uh, that helped us a lot. Yeah. And we're also talking to other citizen engagement companies regarding integrations with their systems uh, to the Query Cloud platform to offer voice technology to complement their applications. Okay. Well, Matt, you've been on quite a journey with Query and your career so far is very interesting. You know, I, I'm curious and we're all curious about the tenacity it must take to pitch an idea and, and say, have here, no, and then try to do something that's never been done before with data sets that are all all uh, disparate and no standards. You know, tell us how, how have you overcome all of these challenges and what's been your approach along the way? Sure. Yeah, you're right. It takes, uh, it does take a lot of effort uh, and tenacity. You know, building a business takes a lot of time and, and you hear that a lot, right? And mm -hmm. it, it is true. It's very true. It takes mm -hmm. all of your time. Uh, you know, sometimes it's really hard to stay motivated and still believe in your vision um, because, yeah, you, you will hear no uh, a lot. Uh, you know, it's, it's also pretty, it's pretty lonely. You know, you spend a lot of hours working on your startup, um, crafting your product, and you don't always have cheerleaders that are there keeping you motivated and excited about what you're doing. Um, but you know, early on, I reached out to someone in my network who had a successful startup in the geospatial industry. Um, you know, they were very busy as well, but they agreed to mm -hmm. mentor me and, and provided yeah. me with some really good foundational understanding of what was to come and uh, helped me understand the things that I'd need to put into query to have a chance, uh, any chance at, at success. Right. Right. You know, so uh, like I said, like you really, you need to get comfortable with rejection and because it happens over and over again, but um, you know, eventually, you will get your first win and uh, mm. what it really lights up your fire again yeah. and then it provides you with that motivation to keep going yeah. and eventually uh, you'll get more wins and and start building that momentum that keeps driving you hmm. it's kind of like uh, my golf game you know everyone every 20th shot is a good shot <laughs> yeah you just want to hear the ball hit the cup and that yeah. keeps you moving yeah. that's awesome <laughs> Now you've uh, 
you've shared a lot today. And, and what I really appreciate about what you've shared is um, the journey you've been on. And you've said at times, you know, it's lonely to start something and to be passionate about something. Sometimes you're the, you feel like you're the only person doing that. And when you do need to reach out for help, talk to us about what it feels like to have some humility and, and to reach out for help and ask for help. And, and what's it also conversely like to be humble and share what your, your lessons? How has this work humbled you? Right. Yeah. Like, like I've said, it's, it's, it's really hard to build a business on your own. Yeah. Um, and so I, I wanted to do it on my own. Uh, mm-hmm. and I thought that I could, but, uh, eventually, you know, I realized that in order to have a chance at being successful, um, I would need a partner, you know, somebody that I could confide in, bounce ideas off of and, and, and share the duties of, yeah. of, of running a business. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I had to acknowledge my weaknesses and, and find someone else with the same passion that complemented my skill set. Mm. You know, and at first I thought it was, uh, it was impossible, you know, to, to find somebody that you could, you could align with and trust to bring your idea to mm. and, and move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, because the last thing that you want to do is bring on someone that ends up not having the same you know, level of, of passion as you do with your, with your idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's where mm. working on your network, I think is really important. Uh, so socializing your idea with people in your network, um, you may find someone that's as excited and committed as you are and, and are looking for something, um, you know, to work towards uh, as well. So, you know, I, I would advise, though, to be cautious, um, you know, when you're, when, you, when you're looking for a partner or somebody to bring on, definitely uh, think about shareholders agreement up front uh, to protect, you know, mm-hmm. your ideas and understand really the role of uh, of the players, um, yeah. you know, on the on the team, right, right. Well, you know, I like that answer because it's an acknowledgement that we can go further and faster working together, um, but it is based on a foundation of trust. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Matt. No, thanks a lot for today. This has been fantastic. And I wish I was there having one of those beers with you, but one day we'll be able to see each other again. You know, yeah. You're on the leading edge of GIS right now. And uh, there's a saying out there in the open data world is to put the data where people's eyes are so that they can use it, feeding it into apps that you mentioned. But uh, you know, you're going one step further and actually putting data as the answer to their, to, you know, to how people are, are uh, looking to interact with municipalities. So it's like, it's super cool. Um, and for those who are just hearing about you right now, you know, how could they find out more about you? How could they get involved with what you're up to? Yeah, well, thanks, thanks, Jeff, for saying that. Um, you know, for anybody who's interested in, in trying uh, Q11 out uh, and learning more about what we're doing at Query, um, you, can, you can easily just enable Q11 on any Alexa oh enable device by saying Alexa open Q11 or on your Google assistant say, hey Google talk to Q11 um, but you could also visit us visit us at uh, query.com and query is spelled uh, Q W H E R Y dot com or reach out on LinkedIn uh, if you've got any questions uh, I'd love to chat with you and if you've got ideas of where this technology could go we'd love to talk to you Well, Matt, thank you so much for being a Pathfinder and sharing your story today. Yeah, thanks again for having me, Jeff. I really uh, really appreciate what you're doing in in creating this place and space for people to learn from each other. So thanks again. Awesome. Thank you. I want to try one thing. Hey, Google, talk to Q11. All right, here's Q11. Welcome to Q11. There you go. Inaccurate responses only to access your repenting access to Q11. It's a little verbose. Okay. So Simple information. Simple information. Email your local counselor. <laughs> hey, Google, email my counselor. Say, get <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs>